Yo, 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 it's your boy, Glenn Lawrence, and today we are going to be talking about, well, wait a minute, where am I at? Welcome to the Trident, motherfuckers. Welcome to the motherfucking Trident. Today, I am joined with the one and only R.P. Thor. Yo, yo, yo. Mr. Phil Foster. Watch his hands. His hands are a little frisky, and they will creep, ladies. They will definitely creep. Mm. What's, What's up, Glenn? Skull. Nice to be here. Today, we're going to talk about escalation. Now, last week, we talked yeah. about a dead bedroom. Correct, Glenn? We, we talked about, you know, having a, a dead bedroom and how to get things back going. Today, you guys are going to help educate us on how, like, you guys are got something going on, but how do you take it to the next level? Exactly. Things are yeah. smooth. They're running along. You got your girl. Yeah, you think it's dialed in, but, you know, it's just kind of. You're starting to see a schedule come into play. Ooh. Now, you're going to have to take a little bit of initiative here. You're going to have to add some novelty. Well, Phil, how do you do that? We'll oh, talk man. a little bit today. I'm thinking that there's a couple ways to do this. And I'm thinking probably some of the best ways to do it and to do it with a little bit of red pill fervor is to play with her. Remember when got, you came to girls? Before you guys get into that, just real quick, though, how do you, these guys find, like, where do they find the novelty? Like, is it all in porn? Are they supposed to just, like, no. porn to know if this is what they want to do? No, 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 But, But you can still, you can insert passion. You can insert intimacy. What you want to avoid is you want to avoid routine. Although sometimes routine is comforting, you want to avoid routine. It doesn't always have to be porno sex, by the way. But what it does have to do is you have to, as a man, you, you uh, think of us, guys. We're, most of us are three to six minute wonders. Excuse me? Introduce novelty and enjoyment. You're going to have to get to the next level. Right, hey, hey, yes, sir. Hey, can we just pour one out real quick, man, for the for those guys? Man, pour it out, man. Uh, who, who are you referring to as three to six? <laughs> pour, <laughs> pour them out, bro. We pour do 45 out. minute minimums over here. Yeah. <laughs> well, they don't have to be marathon sessions either, but remember quality over quantity is pretty good. Although I like quantity as well. You know, uh, quality is, is very intriguing because when you can get the quality up, you can get uh, the excretions of her brain chemistry and other bodily fluids at such a level so deep that it almost enters into a spiritual realm. Mm -hmm. And there's ways to do this. Uh, remember, even though a woman has, that kitty down below the real kitty exists up here in her mind so you know if things are just rolling along smooth you're going to have to learn to play with her as rolla would say and play with her uh so you're going to have to slow it down you're going to have to start teasing i think the best place i like to start guys out with is something called coquetry right you've often heard it referred to as that's not cuckoldry yeah yeah right? clarify, clarify clarify let's clarify that Coquetry yeah. is the technique of push pull. Okay. You ever get involved with a woman where things are starting to go up and then you push away and say, Nope, not now. You're going to have to earn it. Mm. An example, right? Uh, that part of it. Also, there's emotional spiking that's involved. I used to do something like this myself, and you can do it around things that you wouldn't normally do. And that's where, for instance, I, I used to have, my wife would make me these burritos, right? She'd make me these breakfast burritos. And so I would just spike her motions and play with her. And believe it or not, this actually leads to better uh, bedroom fun. So she'd make me this food. And the first time she would make it, I would start to eat it. And then I would kind of, oh man, I'd put it down, throw it down like it was the worst tasting crap in the world, right? And I'd look around and say, oh my God. And she'd go, what, what? Thinking that she had screwed up, right? Emotions spiking straight to the roof. Now I'd look at her and say, I, I don't know if I can take these to work with me. They're so delicious and make me so damn horny. I don't even know if I can finish this burrito. Boom. Now I have an emotional up, an emotional bring back down. She goes, oh, you're just kidding. Ha, ha, ha. You just had me going for a minute. Mm. You see, now you don't have to use that in particular, but there's lots of things like that. You know, she can be doing something around the house as simple as, you know, unplugging the vacuum down there. Oh, you better not do that. You know, I'm going to have to get that vacuum. 
and put it somewhere where you can't access it because the way you plug that thing in, it just, it's going to stop the entire day. You're driving me crazy. Little things like that can be very, very useful. I'm just using those as minor examples. And you can overdo yeah. it too. So you have to go in a ladder format, right? You have to couple it with some Kino as well. Yeah, I've did that before. Like I went, ran in the room, like looked like I was frantic, like, as if I'm looking for something. Oh my God, where is it? Where, where is that damn thing? And she's like, what, what are you looking for? Yo, pussy. <laughs> <laughs> Big one for me, man, is, you know, my girl, when she takes care of the house, man, she mops on her hands and knees. Yes, sir. There's something about that fucking position, dude. Mm -hmm. you know, <laughs> but let's just be real. Isn't, like, your girl always <laughs> on her hands and knees? <laughs> yeah. She spends a lot of time crawling, man. <laughs> <laughs> well, now, that as we get more and more advanced to this, we'll definitely go there in future episodes because uh, the BDSM, uh, the Dom sub relationship, is a way to explore that intimacy to even higher levels and to create what's called flow state. Mm. You know, we talk about a dirty talk and that's one of the entry levels into getting better bedroom. I mean, us guys, as soon as we say, Oh, give me the snatch and, and this and that, and we're ready to go. Right. It takes a little bit more for the girls. You gotta be a little more finesse type of game, right? You got to paint a scenario or explore a fantasy in some ways you can use tools. You know, we're not talking about pornos here, but you do want to start it off as something that would be intriguing and mysterious. Mm. Something mysterious that has innuendo is often best. And then you start to edge. You edge into that where it's beyond innuendo. And you could do this with really any woman. And it just goes past that innuendo. And then you pull it back. Like, how could you take it like that? Mm. That's coquetry, right? how could you take something like that? where is your mind girl did they raise you in the gutter you see and once that's established and there's this play back and forth she's actually going to get quite excited even if she so says you, no. you, you, you it's you not this is all verbal pretty much this is not physical all verbal at all physical. yet right this is yeah. all verbal. right and then you're going to start to use I, I know they call it what is it the carlo uh kino escalation uh ladder where you're touching there's indirect touching. Now, if this is already a girl, already you have permission to go past indirect, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, picking her up, things like that. You're already at that point where it's more overt, although it does help to do the passive or the, you know, the incidental contact inside of the elbow, you know, gently on the inside of the arm, things like that. And then, you know, as you get closer and closer, you get to the overt where it's belly to belly, things like that, you know. Mm -hmm up together, pull away, you know? Um, so it's this back and forth, almost like a dance, really. And as you get better at this, the, you start to set triggers because you're going to talk to them and you're going to be speaking in that sexy voice. At some point, you're going to be making dirty talk a part of this. You know, you're exploring. You look so sexy. I want you to tell me how sexy you look. She's going to go, what are you talking about? What are you talking about? I says, I want you to tell me yeah. how Listen. sexy you get with me. Oh, I don't. You're just being silly. He said, no, 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 no. And that's where you're going to be forceful. Not forceful, but you're going to be commanding. Mm -hmm. And then you're going to get her to repeat. If you can get her to repeat any of the things that you like, as far as dirty talk is concerned, you know, oh, tell me what you like. Oh, I like this. Oh, say that again. You know, mm -hmm. say it like you mean it, girl. You did not say it like you mean it. I think I'm going to have to smack you where the sun doesn't shine because you didn't say it like you mean it. Are you just playing around with me? Mm -hmm. These are the kinds of things that you go back and forth with. And then you can laugh, put it off, come back, be stronger. And at some point, you're going to actually start to use the dirty talk in a format where it gets really dirty. You're going to talk about how her genitals are swelling when you're around, how she likes this. You're going to learn these things. And you're going to start to adapt it. Hey, we're right here in public. How about that dressing room right over there at the coals? You know, oh, she's going to get all upset. And maybe it'll stir something in her, the, the fear, the excitement of getting caught. Now, I'm not saying you do anything. But you're already paving the way to better sex later. Why? Because when you get into that intimate environment with her on the next go around, guys, and you're not in the coals, she's going to remember it because you're going to bring it up as a fantasy. You're going to describe where you were at. I was at coals. Well, Thor, Thor, I want to uh, chime in here. Right? <laughs> Phil, Phil, Yo. Like, so that method sounds really, really appealing. You know, I think a lot of guys could, you know, start implementing that, right? You know, um, the talking and the dirty talk and, and stuff like that, and then escalate it. But do, 
do you have another approach? Is there is there more than one approach to to starting off, other than than the the talking sure. aspect? Absolutely. You know, the big thing I wanted to go ahead and tee off on with uh, Thor and what he was talking about, gents, it's it's called verbalization. And here's the thing, you know, when you can speak something into existence, it will become existence. So what Thor was basically talking about is, you know, when you start doing these suggest this suggestive speaking with your girl and you're you're definitely talking about, you know, certain situations, whether it's fantasy or whatever it is, he like he he talked about the coals, you know, and I mean, the thing is, is it's on her mind. You get her to verbalize these things. You know, that's what you want your girl to do is be able to be comfortable around you to be able to even verbalize to begin with, you know, and other things you can do definitely to escalate, you know, um, on the on the push pull thing, you know, so your girls in your life, you know, it, it, it's, you know, I like to what I do with my girls is, you know, I remove my attention for a little while and then I give them a lot of attention. So I'll push pull them that way. And then when I give them that attention, I give them a lot of uh, physical touch. Okay, so if you're if you got a wife or a girlfriend or something like that, and it's kind of stale, you know, and not only are you verbalizing like Thor was talking about, but you need to increase the amount of physical contact that you have. And it doesn't have to be anything more than, you know, understanding how your woman's body operates. I mean, because they're all different. They all have different zones in which they, you know, get turned on, you know. So like with one of, one of my girls, you know, the big thing is, is the, the low of her back. She loves that shit. So I'll just walk by her and I'll put my hands on the low of her back and just kind of hang out with her for a second and then just move on. Another thing I'll do is, you know, just that physical touch off and on and then remove it for a little while and let her think about it and just say, hey, you know, date later on down the road, just like, you know, they say you have to go to work or something like that. After you've touched her a few times like that before work, shoot her a text. Say, man, your skin felt really good in my hands. I want to see that skin later. And I guarantee you, I guarantee you after that physical touch and then verbalizing that to her, whether it's through a phone call or text later, 100% she's going to be thinking about what leads into sex. Okay. I think that guys, you know, they, they don't touch their girls enough. Okay. I'm a big physical touch guy. I think that women need that because here's the thing, kind of like, you know, what Thor is talking about, it all starts up here in their head. You know, when you verbalize, get a woman to verbalize and you also give her that physical contact and doesn't have to be sexual at all. Um, it it kind of solidifies things and gets them going in the right direction. I agree. Yeah. Completely. Cause you know what I, I, I wanted to add to that, like, cause you mentioned Thor is talking about communicating, talking. So that could be either, in person or through text you're talking yeah. about physical touch i think if you add all three of them you have a really good combination right you can start off maybe verbalizing it right mm -hmm. and then before you leave you know you give her a little touch but then you know maybe you're at work and then you're sending a nice little naughty text and adding all those up all those different elements to it kind of helps keep that thought process in the forefront of her mind so now she is fantasizing or thinking about it so that's where the that's where the groundwork is so yeah. then by the time you get home she might already be there and so she might be way ahead of you in that sense like right exactly so let's lace it all together you're at work okay but you've had the conversation in the coals and then you've given her that physical touch and taken off and you've headed to work the text message might read like this god my fucking cock is hard as a rock after I was thinking about Coles and I had my hands on you this morning. There it is right there. <laughs> sure. And I want to take it to the next level too. So start these things out when you are doing something like shopping at Coles, right? Or there's even social events mm. that even escalate further. Guys, let's be honest. If you're at a social event with your girl and there's beautiful people around laughing, joking, having fun, not getting drunk, acting like assholes, but just being fun and social with other people. This leads to a, a lot of relaxation, social proof, and just having social proof of people around you, respecting you, men and women. Mm -hmm. This lays the foundation for later. Do some teasing, not in front of other people, but, you know, secret, like you have an inside mm -hmm. joke, you see. This is where you can lay some fantasy work with your girls, you know. Uh, you could do once you know your girl and you know her uh, enough, you can actually engage in these little private fantasies in public. And that's one way to introduce novelty. 
Mm. We're not saying that you're cheating or anything like that or any, any situation such as that, but it could be as simple as, honey, I, we're at this party and there's hundreds of people here. And I see those girls all dressed like that. Which one do you think is the prettiest? I'm just curious about your opinion. You know, and then she's going to ask you, who do you think is the prettiest? And you're going to look at them and say, well, they're all really pretty, but I'm kind of thinking I'm liking you a little bit better. But if I had to choose and it was really, you know, push come to shove and then don't pick anybody from there, pick somebody from across the room. So you spike her, you see. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of little techniques like that that you can use. And of course, when you when you're there's a way to speak to a woman when you're doing this sort of thing. It's that low, soft, Phil Foster type of voice. You're speaking into her left ear. No, 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 wait a minute, guys. Like, you're, 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 you're telling guys that they should look at other women and ask their woman who they find. <laughs> I love it, man. Yes. Like, yes. There's, like, there's like, a reason like, to do that. Yes. Because, like, typically guys are like, wait a minute, hold on. You tell me to do this. I'm going to get in trouble. Well, she gets mad at me. So you this is, access. Yes, this is part of that coquetry. This is also expressing dominance, you see. Mm. And by doing that and getting her involvement into it, even though she might feel a little bit jealous or a little bit anger, it's exactly the same feeling as when she's aroused. Yes. They are they plugged to the same spot? And you're going to use that as your spike leverage. And so, you know, I would be pushed by certain segments of society saying that's just as bad it's not just as bad i'm being mm. responsible and i'm taking care of her making sure that she is always seeing me as the best possible choice and being very aroused by me at all times so that's one of the reasons you would want to go there most guys overdo it though you see yeah because as soon as the gal picks one they do something stupid Right up front and say, yeah, I'd pick her too. Let's go ask her for a threesome. It's a whole nother step. Guys and me. Wah, wah, wah. Exactly. Yeah, like, like, you know, they just jump from like zero to a hundred with it, right? Exactly. Like, they're, like, so, yeah. they're like, you know, like if, you're, yeah. if, if that's what you're going to do, you got to slowly open that door and guide her yep. through it, not just yeah. push her in the deep end and be like, here we go, <laughs> right? Hey. I wanted to Many comment. Guys do not have that kind of competence for years. You have to get somewhere else to, even if you fantasize that there's an approach that you can use, but it's definitely not that it's, it's a whole different animal for the better part of a long time to even know if you're that kind of person. So uh, a couple of physical cues, you know, you're spiking your girl, right guys. And just wanted to, and maybe Thor, he probably has a few more, but uh, you know, when I do this with, with my girl, man, it, it never fails. Like her neck and her upper chest area, they, they start to flush a little bit. That's how, you know, that spiking is working. Her eyes might dilate a little bit. She might, you know, express a little bit of nervous energy as well. So you're on the right track. If she's displaying those physical attributes when you're doing this with her and you got to have some finesse with it, right? Yes, sir. You know, that's the whole, that's the whole point is you can't go in there and just like a bull in a China closet and, and, and throw it out there. You have to slowly get to this position. So it's, for me, it was like, I'll just go ahead and lay it out here like this. There, there was times when I really started discovering the red pill and my girl, you know, what I would do is we'd be out at the store, you know, and I would get attention from other women in front of her. And you know how women are about that. They get competitive, you know, obviously, and I could sense that competitiveness in her. And I would say, and she's pretty good looking. She's got a nice ass. What do you think? You know, just like that and just keep rolling. Right. I'm dead serious. And you know what? And she's like, and she would look at me. She goes, she'll never fuck you. Like I do Phil Foster. Good answer. That's a good way for her to pass yeah. your shit test. And you already preempted her shit test. Yeah, exactly. And so that's the whole thing, guys, is you got to finesse it in there. And so whenever you have those opportunities from attention from other women, when your girl's in here, when, when she is with you and you're out in public, it's important for you to understand that any opportunity for another woman to give you intention, let it happen. Don't run from that. Let that interaction happen and let it happen in the presence of your girl. Mm -hmm. And if she, and, and then, flip it immediately on her like that. Yeah. Okay. And see what that does is it diffuses the situation. It takes the anger out of her for another woman showing you interest. Number one, cause they're competitive as hell. I don't care what you say, yeah. you know, and that's the, that's the moral of the story. And number two, uh, that kind of, 
it kind of like stokes the fires of who you are as a man and your status a little bit. You're like, Hey man, I got the attention of this other girl. Hey, I'm, I'm on the right track. You know, my physicality is on point. I'm, I'm, I'm looking good appearance wise. I'm carrying myself appropriately in the social situation for this other woman to pay attention to me. Mm-hmm. So there's a two, twofold win on that. Not only is it boosting your confidence as a man, number two, it's providing an opportunity for your girl to compete, even though she's already your girl, which well, provides true, excitement. Am I, am I, am I, am I heading down the wrong nope, road? Yeah, absolutely. There's one, one more component that's often missed. I missed and it. You hit the main one. You didn't miss it. I'm going to add to it. Uh, it, it. You're on it. Is that component where, you know, you have other females publicly interested or at least giving some sort of look. And that's an important component of it. But another important component that's often overlooked by guys that you can leverage later is when you're in a social environment and you have the respect of other respected men in the social group. That's them admiring that man and she is attached to that man and he is is a reflection. You know, she is proud of that. That's a big deal too, you see. So that's part of her provisioning and all that sort of thing. A lot of guys will also do the, the you know, that accepting of female attention in public and they'll sometimes they'll go too far and they got to realize they got to be prepared to pass some shit tests but also if they don't pass it and they get in that spot you're going to be faced with a comfort test later and you got to be aware of what you need to do because if you're passed if you don't pass that comfort test you're gonna it's gonna be harder in the bedroom for at least that moment (laughs) oh man the joys of intellectual dynamics now there's there's guys that you know that try to do this but they try to make it they try to put on the girl to first look at like another guy like to ease her in like like if i get her to look at a guy first and see tell me who she finds attractive and then maybe that will open the door for her to ask me who i find attractive and then so does it come off so like i'm checking out other women what do you guys say about that because i think that's a problem i think guys that do that up set that up they're actually setting their woman up to look at other men and to sexualize other men and that is thing is the ultimate problem in all this, right? Weak. Don't think your woman doesn't already see all their men. They're very good at it and you're not going to notice. Mm-hmm. They're trained from birth. This is stupid. You do something like that and, and you're weak and you're going to show your weakness. Mm. Yeah, that's a big thing right there. It's the biggest one of the biggest lies girls tell men is I don't look at other men. Yeah. Yeah. He said, yeah, you got to laugh at that one. Say, okay, babe, you're a sweetheart. Slap her on the ass and send her on her way. Looks actually yep. matter more to women. than it, it, so. it sounds cute and everything, right? When they go, I don't see nobody else but you, babe, bitch. We're lying. <laughs> I'm over here choking on my breakfast burrito. Thor was talking about. <laughs> yeah. They have to look at us. We're built for combat. They have to say that. <laughs> <laughs> no, but uh, you would never in a million years tell your girl to look at another man. Because you are the prize, gentlemen, 100 percent You don't want her looking anywhere so, else. Where where can guys like go to find it? If the if, if if porn if porn's not the only option, like is there courses? Like, do you guys teach courses? Do you guys because I know Thor, you 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 have a, a course called Game Nine Thousand. I you do. Know, that was a pri- that's a private course that's only been done one time because discretion is the name of the game. Yeah, and so, it definitely goes into that and alternative lifestyles and into pretty, pretty, pretty intense escalation. I did that in conjunction with Sterling Cooper, who offers a sexual escalation course that goes right into sexual escalation ladder. So it gets right into that moment where she's receptive and goes right through full completion in how you might grab her neck, how you might grab her hair, how you can pull away, push in all the things that will push her buttons and get her in that flow state. Because if you don't know, once you have a woman that's aroused, you can get her aroused to a certain point where they get into what's called a flow state. If you've done any erotic hypnosis. And at that point it is almost spiritual for them. And it's an extremely high bonding process and they pretty much lose all their inhibitions. And you could see this experienced in real life. You know, when girls get uh, together and they're at this wild party and they just get in, you know, a little bit inebriated and then things go wild and the inner horror comes out because they pretty much get to a certain spot and they can't stop. And that's where you want to take them with this escalation ladder. Most men don't really know how to do this, but when you do this, the bonding is super intense. So this is why all of us would fear having a girlfriend or a wife that had a pro dom in their history. 
it would make it you're talking about this different. guy, right? <laughs> yeah, my buddy uh, Sterling. Yeah, he's a savage. Now, he's a porn star, right? Uh, he's a former adult um, male performer, award-winning, shall we say. Award-winning. So he teaches the course on how to sexual dy- – so this is sexual dominance escalation. So this is just like what we were talking about, like slowly building things up and becoming that guy, right? Well, he gets he does one on, on Dirty Talk, too, which would really be the precursor to this. I, I mean, I do one on okay. that, too, but it's very similar. We've talked about this before, but he's really – get this one is why this one is so special – it takes it past that point where we've already talked about fantasy, which was, which we haven't really gone there. But if you're going to talk about fantasy and without watching porn, things like that could be extremely powerful. You've already got to that point and she's kind of waiting for you to initiate. Cause what work, what guys really fail at is guys. A lot of guys will think, damn, if she really loves me, she's going to initiate sex. And they do this while they're married and they have long-term girlfriends, man, I'm sitting right here. I got my shirt off. A lot of guys convince themselves that their girls are going to initiate. Girls are not built that way. Men need to initiate. It's very rare that they will initiate. Of course they will. But you you have to kind of play this little game if you're going to get them uh, aroused and initiate. If they want you to initiate. Yeah, You're the hunter. Yeah, because I, I think a lot of guys actually worry about that. that they try to um, wait for their girl to initiate so they don't come off as a horn dog. What do you guys think about that? Like I, me personally, I say like, look, if you if you're horny and you want some ass, and your girl's right there, you let her know. Like, hey, baby, yeah, you bend over and take this dick. It doesn't but, matter where you are. It does not matter. No, I don't care where you are. If you're <laughs> you at a dinner that? party and you want some of that. It's like, hey, let's go for a walk. Yeah, yeah, and you can always tell the guys that talk, and you were talking with them. They always the ones that don't really explore very much of this. They think that. They think that all girls that they really love, you're doing reverse cowgirl every time you have sex. It's like it's like the last thing they ever want to do. It's crazy. If you've been around, you know. Damn, bro. <laughs> they would rather have you hold them, hold them down and do it that way. Not with them doing all that work. Yeah. So but it's good to put to them to work though. Mark. We're about to hit our 30 minute mark. So yep. how about we go around the table real quick and just give one point of advice that they could start with where to start and then we'll close out and wrap it up thor go ahead start with you buddy okay i'm going to give you the best one ever because it's going to give you insight into the woman's mind i want you to read the book by nancy friday my secret garden it was done maybe 30 years ago and it's a, a famous writer who asked women all across the country to send in tapes and to write that write her and she would be discreet and anonymous and capture all of their sexual fantasies. You need to hear how women actually become aroused and what arouses them and what they're thinking about when they're actually having sex with men. This is crucial and will change your life forever on how you approach things. Awesome. Mr. Dr. Phil up on you. Foster, what's up, man? What's up, man? I actually got the book right here, man. This book right here. That's a good one. This one right here is Dom's Guide to BDSM Volume 1. 49 must know tips on how to be the perfect Dom master your submissive will truly respect and admire. It's by Matthew LaRocco. I got that. Okay. I'm telling you guys right here, if you want to spice things up in your relationship, read the book and then read it a second time. Here's the thing, man. If she's bored, you need to spice things up explore it you'd be surprised how dirty your girl's mind is as a matter of fact your woman's mind is like 10 times filthier than yours she wants to be in a situation with you believe it or not to where she can't even look you in the eyes when it's all said and done so check out matthew larocco's book right here dom's guide to bs bdsm you'll love it it's a good recommendation yes sir awesome and for me okay my opinion best way to start is start by creating what is it thor that dominant masculine presence all right Mm. step one first become the man become the dude that commands that ass when he walks in the room where every woman knows that that ass he's coming for it and she's gonna give it to him start there and start with yourself becoming that guy be that guy Mm. from within and then 
work on the escalation part. But because I think it's important to know that you can't initiate anything if you don't have the confidence to actually approach it. So you got to first work within yourself and become that guy, that guy that commands the attention, that commands her desire. And then from there, learn the escalation as the tactics that these gentlemen have definitely give us today. Learn those on top of your dominant masculine presence. And if you need help with that, make sure that you go to Thor's um, Gumroad and sign up for his dominant masculine presence course. All right. Got to throw a plug in there, Thor. Thanks, man. Um, you start it's a there. lecture and it's uh, available once you buy it. You have it forever. So, exactly. And then, if you know what, maybe you need to get in shape. So, after you got your dominant masculine presence, you need to work on that six pack. You hit up Phil Foster at philfosterfitness.com and you'll get your ass in gear with your supplements and everything else. But you add all these things up and then, bam, I think you are set to go. What do you guys think? 100%. You bet, Glenn. Thank you. No problem. No problem. Well, that's it for this episode of the Trident, gentlemen. Let's close it out. Thor, be our leader. Thank you for tuning in to the Trident with these great men, Glenn Lawrence, Phil Foster, and myself, R.P. Thor. Until next time, we'll see you on the next episode of the Trident.